Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I'm gonna talk about linear relationships and curvilinear associations in business research. So this is part of my Nerd Out Wednesday series where I just talk about things that are interesting, that I find interesting in science and I hopefully other people do too. So what I'm gonna do is talk to you exactly, I'm gonna explain what these linear relationships and curvilinear associations are and then get into you know why they're probably not used properly most of the time and then finally you know what can we actually do about this going forward in terms of these particular issues so if you don't know i'm actually a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship and this whole reciprocity project gain the e is written with a three is really my way of doing research and, and trying to both give back to the world and to those people that have helped out before me and then as well as doing research and helping out other researchers to, to, to move forward with the research game. So I'm just sort of telling you some interesting things that I do know about. So in terms of linear relationships, what is that? So the simplest linear relationship that we can do is where A, uh, when something changes, A, right, that there is going to be some sort of association, a one-to-one -one mapping, something is going to happen with B, another variable. And if so, so for example, if A goes up, uh, B is going to go up as well. So if A goes down, another way to think about another way is thinking about if A goes down, then, then B goes up as well. So for example, on a hot summer's day, that the hotter it gets out, the more likely the ice cream sales are going to go up within a particular community. You know, um, another one is, you know, if, if the hotter the day out, the less likelihood that you are going to actually go ice skating out in, 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 in the world, right? So there, there are these linear relationships where we think about these particular linear relationships all the time. Now, another one is thinking about another kind of relationship is a curvilinear association or a curvilinear relationship. And this is talked about a lot within business research all the time. Um, it is probably the biggest go-to thing that we actually go into. So for example, it is the kind of relationship where as A increases, first of all, B might um, start out low and then as A continues to increase, B is gonna go higher and then eventually B is gonna drop off. So you can think of these, sometimes we talk about them as U-shaped relationships. If you're in an MBA program or an undergraduate business program, we often would talk about two by two relationships where um, when you know things are multiple things are high, then the relationship is going to disappear or something like that, right? So that's essentially what we're looking at is that as you increase A, B is kind of going up and then down. Or for example, another way is B might be up and then it goes down and then goes up again. So there is all these kind of curvilinear relationships that we think about. Uh, and these are not the same as nonlinear relationships, by the way. Nonlinear relationships are uh, they are nonlinear in, in the parameters of the particular model. My statistics, engineering statistics prof used to get really upset with me whenever I suggested that kind of stuff. So um, it is not the case. It's a curvilinear relationship because you can still use it in a linear model. So, so why, why am I actually talking about this? Why is this kind of an important topic to think about? So first of all, Linear relationships, why we talk actually talk about these particular linear relationships, A leads to B, and or A is correlated with B, is because um, they're the simplest relationships that we can actually possibly explain. So it does not represent reality very well most of the time. So reality in, in within organizations, within markets, wherever, it's a really complicated thing. Uh, it is is terribly complicated. So to boil it down into a very simple simple relationship where A leads to B is not really representative of reality. So what typically happens is that when A happens, when something happens, that there are A B C D E F G kind of reactions to it, and then they might actually relate to B somehow. And there's kind of maybe an indirect relationship, or some maybe that there is what's called a mediating relationship. So it affects something else, and then eventually it affects something along the lines going forward, right? So it affects a B going forward. I, and and often we don't know what these things are, and often what we often have is that A and B kind of correlate at the exact same time in that they are 
you know, they're moving in the in a similar direction and it might be caused by something completely different. And that is, I mean, that's just kind of reality, right? The other reason why we actually use these rela linear relationships or we sort of get to talking about, you know, A leads to B is because the tools that we have, which is generally some sort of regression analysis, some ordinary least squares regression analysis, that's how it models reality that we are trying to predict some sort of dependent variable or some sort of what's called a criterion variable. You're, you're trying to uh, you're, you're trying to explain some sort of a variable with the, explain the variance with this, this um, tool within a, um, explain the variance of a variable. So how much it actually moves with this particular tool. And that's the best sort of tool that we have. We have sort of tips and tricks to get at different other sort of these, these more complicated relationships, but they have a lot of limitations as well, right? So we have like instrumental variables and that other things, I won't get into those. But they have limitations as well, which are really kind of similar to the same limitations as thinking about these, these linear relationships. And then the other thing that we necessarily don't really explain very well is that often, you know, the relationships are not a one to one mapping by any sort of means, right? That, that if something happens, it doesn't necessarily lead to this particular thing over here. There might be, in fact, some sort of, maybe it's a delayed response. So you do something and then maybe a year down the road, something happens, or maybe that there is some sort of triangle kind of response or something like that. Or maybe that, you know, there's all kind of re responses that you can get that are not necessarily all that clear and it's not necessarily a, a, a um, curvilinear relationship. Case in point with this sort of triangle relationship is when you look at things like um, performance feedback, for example, within an organization, they're triangle relationships. Or, you know, you look at, you know, prospect theory, that's kind of much more of a triangle relationship or maybe an S relationship. It's, you know, that there, there is, there's all kinds of crazy forms that you can get that are not necessarily this curve linear relationship. And that, I mean, that that is kind of what reality is. It's complicated, it's really messy, right? So why I'm actually pointing this out in terms of these particular problems and thinking about these curve linear associations. Well, we make really poor sort of judgments of how the world actually works, but we are trying to make some sort of judgments about how the world works as academics and as researchers. Whenever you're doing any sort of business research or research within organizations, we are trying what we're trying to do is boil boil down these really complicated processes that happen within business within organizations within innovation whatever it is you're looking at we're trying to synthesize those things into a very simple relationship such that we can actually explain what's going on because if you can't boil it down to a very simple relationship we can't necessarily explain what's going on right we can't necessarily tell other people that well maybe you should do this we know that it's really limited in the things that we are actually trying to predict and that there's tons of messiness there. But what we're trying to do is boil it down so that we can communicate to the lowest common denominator, right, which is probably most of us, right? There's complicated ideas that, that, that we are trying to boil it down into something that is reasonable and somebody can actually run with this and actually implement that particular suggestion that we have. Now, what can you do as researchers going forward or as people that are interested in business research? Um, you know, thinking about these linear relationships and curvilinear relationships, the first thing that I would do, and most people actually get this wrong whenever I'm looking at papers and things like that, is just simply look at the distribution of how things are actually working. Just look at the data and look at the very simple st uh, statistics that are out there. Just not even look at numbers. I, I don't like looking at numbers at this day and, and age because numbers actually really lie a lot of the times. You can change things a lot, but what, rather what I like to look at and what I always tell my, my students and people that you know are interacting with me is just look at the data and try to plot the data in a simple way that it kind of makes sense, right? And you're going to get a much better sense of what's going on and you're going to get a much better sense of how this actually behaves by just simply looking at the data and how it relates. So using simple things like, you know, just plotting the distribution of a particular, so using a histogram and looking at the histogram of a particular variable, 
doing scatter plots, just plotting things over time, really simple things. You can really get some amazing insights from simple things like this that you would never be able to get. And you will start looking at these relationships and start thinking, hmm, they are really complicated. And for me and for us to boil this down into linear relationships or these curvilinear relationships, it often doesn't make a lot of sense. However, you know, that's the best we can do. And actually, what I would suggest going forward is that what we do is, I mean, we can theorize and think about these particular linear relationships, right? Because that's how we actually behave as human beings. We think about things very linearly. We think that A leads to B and B leads to C. But in reality, it's not like that at all, right? So we can sort of talk about these and sort of mention these kind of linear relationships, but just be really open and honest and, and sort of suggest it's a really complicated phenomenon, whatever it is you're looking at, and actually put the data out there so that other people can see and, and you know, explore from them for themselves and say that, yeah, this is a really difficult sort of thing to explain, but maybe it is the best thing that we have right now is to use these linear relationships and explanations that we have or these curvilinear relationships and explanations that we have so that's all i wanted to talk about today hopefully you found this nerd out wednesday really interesting i personally think this stuff is fascinating i don't know who else does um it's kind of a strange thing. So anyways, um, give me a thumbs up if you like this video as well as do subscribe to the YouTube channel. I do try to put out things that are as helpful as I possibly can. That's what the whole reciprocity project is all about is to encourage people to be helpful and to be nice to others as much as they possibly can. Um, so check it out. Check out the other YouTube videos. Hopefully you find those interesting. All right, take care. Bye.